Welcome back. Welcome back to the workshop. TF Custom Shaving Brushes. Um, going to be doing another stream. Um, you've probably seen that in the uh, chuck here I've got a blank um, from one of the castings I've done in one of the earlier streams um, a couple of days ago. Um, so I'm going to be turning that into a, hopefully a nice looking handle. Um, should be quite uh, stunning hopefully if all goes well. Um, and if I get through that one and I've got time, the um, stream will probably go for a while today. Um, but if I've got time to do another one, I'll, I'll do another one or I'll start another one. But we'll see how the stream goes. Um, I'm just going to give a little bit of time just to uh, see if we get anybody coming to the chat. Um, if not, I'll just start the stream anyway. Um, and the stream will go live on our YouTube channel um, later on uh, today. So... Um, yeah, I'm just going to cruise around for a little while. I've got a bit of music in the background. I might beef the music up a little bit. It's just um, um, uncopyrighted stuff that I can use. It's just uh, music from uh, YouTube. Um, and it's all sort of easy listening -y type thing. But there's a mixed variety in there from folk to uh, classical to pop to, you know, jazzy and whatever else is in there. So it's, um, yeah, just background music really. So anyway, let's um, give it a couple of minutes and see if anybody comes into the chat. And if anybody comes into the chat, um, we'll get the video underway. So I'll probably give it a couple of minutes, guys, and then we'll take it from there, right? Eh? Okay, I think we might get started. So um, look, what I'm doing is I've got this blank here, as I mentioned earlier in the uh, in the, the live. Um, got this one here, which we're going to turn into a handle, and I've got a nice um, two-band finest here. Um, just let me go to that other camera to show you this. So we'll go to camera three. Um, one of my two-band finest that I use in a lot of my um, a lot of my brushes. Um, beautiful tips on it. Um, Fairly dense, as you can see there. These soften up beautifully. Um, nice, nice backbone in them. Never had any problems with the quality of them. Um, so uh, this handle will be getting one of these fitted in it, um, and then if we get through that one. I do have another blank here, which is um, from again from a previous um, live stream a few nights ago, two or three nights ago. Um, 
it didn't quite turn out with the colour that I wanted to use, so um, um, I'm going to cast another one. Um, but I thought, well, I might as well turn this one into a handle. It should still look quite nice when it's done. And again, that's going to be fitted with a, um, a 26mm two band finest. Um, again, nice dense knot. So, um, yeah, we'll see how we go on the stream anyway. So I've pretty much got everything ready to uh, to rock and roll. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we can get started um, shortly. Um, and if anybody drops into the stream, I'll um, I'll keep checking the uh, laptop. I've got the laptop in a slightly better position now, so I can actually see um, what's going on. Um, yeah, so hopefully, <coughs> hopefully we get a couple drop in through the through the shrine. Anyway, for now, um, I'm going to start by just squaring up the end of that blank. Um, so I'll go to um, camera three for that, and we'll get started. You can see I've got my my long pants on and I've got my woolly jumper on, t-shirt underneath. Somebody turned the heater off up here in Queensland um, today. It's just been cold. It was actually cold last night. It started yesterday and it got really cold uh, yesterday afternoon. Really cold through the night. It was probably still about 17 degrees or something. I don't know. But yeah, it was, um, it was really cool compared to what we've been having anyway. Um, so yeah, so I've got my woolies on tonight. I'm out in the workshop. And um, it's a bit cool out here, even though I've got lights all around me um, for the uh, for the stream. But you know, hopefully they'll generate a little bit of heat and heat me up. Um, and once I get started, um, we should be good. So all right, so I've already set this blank up, and I've put it in the lathe as uh, true as I can get it in there. The blank is slightly out around, um, as they are sometimes when they come out of the moulds. It's no big deal though, because we're going to true everything up once we start to turn it anyway. So I'm going to square up this end here, and then um, and then we'll drill it, which is when I'll have to move this this camera, the, the tailstock camera. I'll have to move that just for a few minutes, so I'll switch to another camera just until we get done what we've got to do there, and then we can reinstate that one um, for the rest of the, the, the handle making. Okay, so um, let's get started anyway. So I'm going to just go in and... Um, True up the end of this blank first, so we'll start off nice and slow, we'll speed it up. Probably going to take that up to about um, 1300 revs, 1300 RPMs I mean, somewhere there, somewhere thereabouts, maybe even a bit faster actually. Um, take it up to 15, yeah that's about 15 there now. And I'm just going to go in nice and gently and just try and And just square up that edge. Tool rest a little bit high. And I might bring the tail stock in a bit and just give myself, oh I can't really do that. Um, we'll leave it there, that's fine. Otherwise um, I can't true up the edge. Just gonna drop that down a little bit more. Come in again. And this is a poly, uh, polyester blank again, so um, they're a little bit more, a little bit harder than the, uh, the polyurethanes or the, the epoxies. certainly feel it on the tools. Um, the tools do need sharpened when you're turning these blanks because um, they are much harder. Still a little 
little bit around this edge here. Take away, we can heat it as the tool cuts. So I'm just going to have a look and see how much more I need to take. It's actually not too bad there now, um, but I do want to take it down a little bit more. Right, that's going to do me and I think um, we'll take some more of that away once we um, start to, to round it off. So um, what I'll do now is I'll, um, I'll bring the tailstock back now and I might swap that out and put a um, <coughs> put the fastener bit in. So we'll knock this out, it's left centre. Take that out and I'll actually take you to um, camera one for now till we get uh, things organised. <coughs> I've already got a fastener bit in here which is, uh, we're going to be fitting these 26mm knots in. Um, and I'm probably going to need around about a 28mm hole so this is a 28mm fastener bit. And I'll set the depth. Um, once I've gone in a little bit, so we just slow the lathe down here and speed it up just a little bit. And I'll bring the lathe in gently to start the point, lock it off. So the point's actually engaging into the um, into the end of the blank now. That's it starting to cut. I'll cut in one or two mil. And then I'll bring it back out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set zero on my um, gauge here on the tailstock. And then I'm going to release the tailstock and bring the tailstock in until the flat of the fastener bit is just on the end of the blank. That way I can use this gauge here to then um, give my depth into the blank. Now the knot in this case is about 70 mil. So I think I'm gonna go in probably about 17 and that'll give it that should give it about 50 53 millimeters um, depth in the socket. So let me just check that. Um, cancel 70 mil Minus 17 equals, yeah, 53. So I think that's going to be a, a nice um, nice loft for that particular knot. So now I'm going to use my gauge and I'm going to go in there until I hit 17 millimeters. Or maybe even 16. Give it a clear. I'll take you to the um, take you to three again now. You can see the bit going in. I'll keep clearing a bit. We're up to 12 mil now, 13 mil. That's 15, and I'm just going to go. That's my depth. I'll take the tail stock back, get rid of this stuff at the way. I've got my air gun set up as well, so I'll be able to give it a blow every now and again if I need to. Um, now I'm just going to mark out the fossil a bit. <coughs> 
I've got a little piece of sandpaper just to take the edge off that um, sharp edge. So I can trial fit the knot without it cutting into the, uh, the hair. Try a knot in there at that size. Check the loft. I'm going to go a little bit deeper with that. Um, that's basic 16. So we'll go a little bit more with that. So again I'll set my my gauge to zero and flush with the end of the blank. We'll turn up the lathe slowly. I'll engage it slowly. That should just be slightly over 17 millimeters. Turn that off. Put the knot in. And I'll just check that size for loft. That's about 56. And just check that around there. Yeah, that feels not too bad actually. So I think we'll um, I think we'll go with that. Maybe just another another mill, I think. So again, set it to zero. Flush with the end, lock the tail stock. Up. So we're at 17 there. One, two, three, there. Take that out because that will definitely be right now. Famous last one, right? Give that a little bit more. Okay. Check that knot. Beautiful. So we're now around about the 54-55 mark, which I think will be, uh, that should be quite nice for that knot, I think. Okay, that's, sharp edge is taken off that, so we're good there. I'll put the um, live centre back in now and wind that out a touch. I'm going to bring it up to the blank, but I'm not going to engage it in the blank just yet, because I want to round that, um, the top of that handle off yet. So bring the tool rest down, bring the tool rest up. And then use my skew in a scraping action and we'll take the RPMs up to about 1500 probably, just or 1516, 16 there. So I'm just going to start to um, shape the top. Now if anybody watched my stream, I um, can't remember if it was last night, the night before I think. What is this Saturday? It must have been um, Thursday. This is going to be a similar shape. 
well actually it's going to be pretty close to that shine so um, that's the shape I want to give this one to be honest it's a nice pleasant shine um, as I said the other night it's a very comfortable brush to hold in the hand hence the reason I like it Once I get that round to where I am happy with it, then I'll put the tailstock in for that little bit of extra security peace of mind. See we're getting the blue coming down the side of that now and then once we start shaping the gold a bit more we'll probably see other little bits of blue coming into that gold. Um, so it should um, should come up quite nice. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to mark down how far I want to go with that um, that top where I have the, the, um, the dividing band. And I can't get my rule in there so I'm going to have to, um, actually I can do it off 100. Um, so I want that round about the 25 mark, which is round about there. We'll have that little ring that goes all the way around. This will be carved up through here. Um, and then we'll hollow in underneath the, the ring, hollow in in here, and come back out to the bottom of the handle, which will be the widest part of the handle. And this bottom section, as you can see, is going to be transparent. I'm, I think it's going to look actually quite nice, this. Um, so I'm going to continue in now. I'm going to go in with this, um, this cut here. Um, so I need to bring the tool rest back a touch. And um, still full speed ahead. Um, just need to get that mark more so that I can see it. So we're talking about there, there's my mark, now I've got a mark to go in with this tool, just need to bring the tool lens back a touch, still a touch, and probably up just a touch. Now, nice and gently into here point of the tool using the skew in a scraping mode and not a lot of pressure in actual fact because I've rounded that now I can bring the tailstock in give it a little bit of extra support out from the end of the, the blank and I'll just lock that off so the live centre has given me some support now as well start shaping the outside of that now until I get the shape that I want. attention. I was too busy looking at the, um, the monitor there. I think I'm going to go and give this tool a sharpen too very shortly. Because I think it does need it. There, I'm just going to 
Tighten our edge up a little bit. I just want to get rid of that out around here in the black. You can hear it kicking in every now and again. Once you get rid of that, it'll be a lot happier. But I think I'm going to go and sharpen this tool very quickly. Um, so give me two secs and I'll be right back. Here we go, I'm back. We're going to um, get a little bit of clear popping up in this um, as well. Um, See, we've got a little bit of blue coming through the um, through the gold and, and areas there, which is quite nice. Um, I'm going to give that a bit of a tidy up. I'm going to form that a little bit deeper here, and then we'll start the hauling out for the uh, lower section of the handle. Carbide, nice, nice and careful with the carbide. I think the clear is a little bit on the uh, more brutal side. Uh, so 
nice and easy with the carbide to start with. And be ready for the streamers going everywhere, wrapping around the light. For now, otherwise it gets wrapped around the. Uh... Hey Tim, how are you, mate? How are you, Tim? I've moved the cameras around again, mate, just for you. Um, I'm doing the clear casting uh, tonight, and if I get time after this one, I might even do that other one, um, the gold, white, and the brownie colour. Um, but I want to get this one done first and I think this will turn out to be quite a nice handle. Um, it did chip a little bit before um, so it's a little bit more brittle than the, the one the other night. But um, yeah pop in for a few minutes mate that's fine mate I'm going to be on for two or three hours so if you want to drop in later on I, you can drop in later on too. I'll probably be here for a while so it's no big deal. Um, how's the music volume in the background mate? Good. Music's good. It's not too loud. Loud enough you can hear it. Just put it back the uh, other camera, mate. So this one's going to be the same, same shape as the one um, I've done for you the other night, Tim. Um, like I said, I really like that shape. And I think it will suit this one with a transparent bottom on it. So, uh, So is the uh, the sound the sound to my voice is it um, is it okay or is the music does the music need to go up or down any uh, Tim the background music Blank um, 
sounded like it was going to be and felt like it was going to be very brittle compared to the last one. I did get a little bit of chip out on that ring through round there as you can probably see in that shot. Um, but that will come out because I've reduced that down anyway. Um, so I'm not overly concerned about that. Um, there is a few little marks up in here I want to see that they come out. So um, we'll keep going with this anyway at this point until I feel I've got enough out of that handle. A better run with the shavings tonight, they're not going up around it as much as what they normally do. Probably shouldn't have said nothing because it would probably, um, probably start now that I've mentioned it. Who else have we got in the chat? Ross Corgan. Yeah, Ross, I just, um, I've been doing enough of these that I've got the shape pretty much down pat. So I start with a couple of sizes, uh, Ross. So I measure down from the end of my blank, when I, once I've determined, actually I'll go here. So once I've determined the end of the blank, or the top of the blank here, I, um, I have a set size down to that, that ring there, the raised ring. Uh, that shot might be better actually. So, <clears throat> I'll just bring this in a touch just to explain it to you. So what I do basically is I, I set my size from here and I have a set size down to this uh, raised section here. And then I, I know that shape in my mind now so um, I don't have to template or anything with that. I've got it pretty, now, pretty much down pat. Looking at this one, I know I've got to take a little bit more off here, so I'll come back to that later. Um, all I'm working to is that size from here to here, and then a size from here down to the base of the handle, which will be down here somewhere. So all I'm doing is I'm tapering in that waist here now, this narrow section. I'll taper that in until I feel comfortable that I've got it enough. And I like that curve in underneath this ring, I like that curve to actually follow this curve, so that it gives you a nice line through there into that hollow section. And then I'll flare this out again down through here to the widest part of the bottom of the handle, which will probably be down here somewhere inside. Um, and then I'll round off the bottom and then part off the blank after and then go through the sanding process, well, before I part it, sand it and um, get it all polished up basically. Um, but I'll keep going, hopefully that answers your question, Ross. So now I've turned that shape, um, I'm just going to come in there with the uh, with the skew as a scraper. And I'm just going to take a little bit off that round. Um, it did have a little bit of chipping in it, it earlier, as you can probably hear there. So I want to get rid of that until we get it nice and smooth again. Check that, see I don't think we've got it all away yet, still a few little chips in there, so we want to get all that away. It's 
just need to bring the tool rest out a little bit. Yeah, feel free to ask any questions along the way. If I can help, I'll try and help. So I'm coming back to this shape here now. I just want to take a little bit more off there to get the right shape in that top section that I want. Um, I don't know what it is, but this, it seems to be really hard where the blue meets the gold for some reason. I had issues there trying to take some material off before. It seems to be really hard there. That's better. I'll just have a look now. Would make a nice west coast handle. <laughs> yeah, that's looking better there now. I'm, I'm a lot happier with that shape there now. And um, I've gotten rid of all the uh, little chipping that was in that, that little rim now. So now I'm just going to go back in and start hollowing a little bit more. Carbide, nice and light cuts. Might have to take my woolly jumper off shortly. It's like somebody turned the heater off here in uh, Queensland, I was saying earlier. Jeez, it got really cold yesterday, through the day, into the night. Freezing last night when I went to bed. And then up this morning it was just as cold. So, um, yeah. I'm starting to get that waist down to where I want it, probably just a little bit more, and then I'll start working um, working the bottom of the handle. To get it where I want it to be. Okay, I'm going to take my jumper off because I've, the sleeves are getting in the way. So um, bear with me two secs, guys. I'll get that off. Pull my t-shirt out. Ah, that feels better. Okay. So, um, just going to check my sizing now for the length of the handle. This one I might even make a little bit longer. Yeah, that's about my usual length, so I was a little bit under when I marked that before, but that's probably where I want it to be there. So I'm going to fire that up. That's going to be the base of the handle. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop the, the uh, tool rest. Bring it out a fair bit. I'm going to drop it right down. The 
see you guys are chatting in the uh, in the chat there, so that's all good. Nothing like a bit of friendly banter going around. Um, there's my uh, pattern tool there. So that determines the bottom of my handle. And then I'm just going to relieve that now so that I can get in there to uh, shape the bottom of the handle. Just for that start of the curve to meet up with the inner curve of the handle on the, on the, uh, the lower section of the handle. I've got to make two or three relief cuts in this because I, I need to try and get enough room to get the skew in there so that I can use it as a scraper from the, uh, the round. It's actually cutting better than I thought um, initially, this polyester resin. It's only when I come off the, off the cut like that that we get that um, crackling. Try and keep this on the cut. And I might move to that other camera again so you can see what's going on. But I won't go any more than that at the moment so we uh, round off the bottom. Put another relief cut in here. So you can see if I stay on the cut it gives a nice clean cut. It only starts to chip when you uh, when you drift off that. Okay, so that's enough of the uh, parting tool. Um, I'm gonna chuck all that over in there now. And I might swap cameras to that one for change and just let you see it from a different viewpoint. electronic stuff a bit of a blow off. Cameras. Now I'll go in with the uh, I'll go in with the skew here now using it as a scraper again. I need to lift up the tool rest so I'll stop the light. Then I'll lift it up quite high and I'll bring it around like that so I can keep tool pressure on the tool rest as I come around with that carve and I do have to watch um, I do have to watch the edge of that tool um, for touching the chuck if I just touch it that's fine it won't grab but I don't want any pressure going into the chuck so um, yeah so we'll start up again and I'm just going to start the rounding of the bottom of the handle now. Come round. Just touching the chuck there now, as you can hear. So I'm just going to stop that a little bit and just work out whether I need to bring this further round, which I think I do. Um, but I'll get more on the uh, bottom first. 
Um, Just on the edge of the chuck there, coming around off the chuck. And I think that'll do for now. I'll come in and hold that um, handle a little bit more. I just need to take this edge here off. Look at that in there. Done. So, back to the carbide. Alright, so we'll come on nice and gently. And I'm just taking that, making that transition from one carb to the next carb. Just refining the shape inside there now as well to get the shape actually the finished shape I want now. When I get those streamers, that's me actually lifting the end of the tool up so it takes more of a cut. When I when I drop the tool down it takes less of a cut and that's how I'm refining the shape I just want a little sort of little bulbous section on the bottom so that it uh, blends in and then fade that away to nothing there and away to nothing now that should do me, I think, for the carbide tool now. And I'll go back to the base now and just um, refine the base here and then blend this curve into this one a little bit more so that I'm happy with the shape. So I'll set that fairly close to the, um, to the chuck again, enough so that I can get the tool sitting flat. touched in there so that will have to come out. Let's get rid of these shavings.
and I'm just going to go back to the carbide just to take that little tool mark out there. There's no need to uh, waste extra time with sanding when I can take it out with this. So again, you'll see me just coming on nice and gently to the uh, material and then I'll lift the end of the hammer. You probably can't see that in that shot, but you will see it in this shot where I'll lift the handle to take more of a cut and I'll back the handle down to take a lesser cut. So I'm starting with a lesser cut, I'm going in just touching the material and then I'll lift the handle up and I'll start to take a cut and you can see that tool mark's gone. There's a couple of little very light tool marks around the curve here. We'll just get rid of them. Get rid of that one. little one in there. It's actually like a little shatter, chatter. Uh, so I think I'll take that out of the sandpaper now. Okay, so I'll remove that. We'll go back into that one and I'll just remove the tail stop, the live center now take that away from the handle. I'll leave the handle where it is though so that you can um, still get that close up head down shot in that handle. There we go, that's a bit better. I'll move the tool rest up the way so I can get in there with a bit of sandpaper. How's that? How's that music in the background? Is the volume okay? So I've slowed the, uh, slowed the lathe down to do the sanding. You still here Tim? What have you been up to today, mate? So where, um, where are you from, uh, Ross?
Oh, WA. 35 years, eh? Where are you originally from? Or are you, um, were you born and bred here? There's a bit of, bit of a delay in the chat coming through to the video, so, um, Spent a bit of time um, in Western Australia myself actually. Um, I was involved in the new hospital that was built down. Um, well, I, I spent a fair bit of time in Perth itself, but then I um, I done a I supplied a um, a lot of product down into um, the hospital that was built down in um, Albany. Albany, yeah, I think it was Albany. Um, so I had quite a few trips down to Albany. Originally from New South, eh? Both my uh, boys are in Sydney. Um, my youngest son's in the um, the RAN, the Royal Australian Navy. And my oldest son works in logistics down in um, down in Liverpool somewhere, I think, in Sydney. Lovely city, Perth. A lot quieter than a lot of the other, um, I know it's busier now, but it's a lot quieter than the other states. Um, I used to like going down to uh, WA and um, I used to do, a, well I used to travel all over Australia, Australasia actually, and um, I used to do a bit of work in, um, well all over the place, but I used to like my trips to um, WA in South Australia. Um, the cities are always nice and clean and um, not as Highly populated as um, Brizzy and Sydney and Melbourne. I had my fair share in, the, on, in those cities too. Didn't uh, I? Couldn't wait to get out of them. Nice to visit. Nice cities. Um, lots to do. But I used to love getting away. I'm a bit of a peace and quiet man. I don't like. Um, I don't like living in the big cities or near too near the big cities. So what I'm doing here is I spend a lot of time on this uh, this part here. Ross, I do a lot of sanding on these, um, just working up through the grits and you'll see I change directions there um, just to try and make sure that I'm not getting any sort of radial circular marks in the blanks and um, I'll spend a fair bit of time with each grit making sure that I get the, uh, the scratches out. So this grit that I use now I've got to make sure that I get all the scratches out from that previous grit. So, um, That's my mission, whether I choose, if I choose to accept. So it's a real boring part of the video, this part. It goes on for quite a while too, because I've got to go through so many different grits, um, and you've got to sand in all the different directions um, to make sure that you get all the scratches out. And then I go to a wet and dry um, micro mesh pad which takes the grit up to about 12,000 grit so it gets pretty fine and they are done in, um, in water. Yeah, Perth's a lovely place mate. Um, like I said, I, was, I always enjoyed my trips to um, Perth and, and Adelaide and surrounding areas. Are you, um, do you frequent any of the, um, the shaving Facebook pages, um, Ross, are you from um, Twas, T-A-W-S-A on Facebook or um, PNC on, on the net, the forum, or have you just 
come across the stream. You're not, you're new, Tim, so you must, uh, you must be from the Facebook page, are you? I might um, lift the music up just a little tad while I'm doing this. The music's nothing special, it's just um, copyright. You've got to have copyright stuff when you put your videos through YouTube. It's got to be um, non-copyright, so um, it's just stuff that I download off YouTube and just put in the background just to make it less boring, I guess. Especially when I come to sections like this. If I go back to that one, you'll see a bit closer what I'm doing. Just trying to make sure I get every every area and get as much of the scratches out as I possibly can. Before I go to the next strip. Getting into all the little detaily sections is the uh, the tricky part, the time consuming part. But you gotta do it, you gotta get it right. Nearly happy with the top. Nearly, not quite. Uh, I 
and I'm happy with that grip. So we're going to the next one. Which is that one. Nice and lightly. Just still refining the shape as well, but mainly just um, following the shape to be honest um, and just um, refine it here and there and just making sure that we get the scratches out. That's the main thing. So a little bit of hand again. I'm not too fussy about right at the bottom because I come back to that at a later stage when I part it off and tidy up the bottom and then um, just give it a bit of a sand and she normally finishes up pretty quickly. But the main thing is getting the, the main bulk of the body all sanded now, the, the main body of the handle. And again, like I say, just making sure that we're getting all the scratches out. So now I'm just going to give that round a little bit of a circular sand. So I'm not leaving any marks in any one direction. One more grit after this with the sandpaper.
Okay, that's the uh, one more to go on the paper and then we change to the wet pads. That's when we'll start to see how the brush is going to look. Um, Almost there with that. Just do the top section a little bit. Yep. We'll just give that a little bit of a touch up. Okay. That's my phone pinging. Don't think it's yours.
just lightly. <coughs> and that's, that's the last of the uh, sandpaper. Um, so now I'm just going to go on to the, uh, the micro mesh pads, um, which really um, give a real fine sand polish to the, uh, to the blanks. So we'll clear the space there for those because these uh, are used with water. And um, I just work my way through the grits. So we'll slow the lathe down. Turn it up just a little bit so we're not running too fast. I'm guessing you can see that starting to go from a, a milky white now to a uh, clear transparent. Uh, golden, real dark blue at the top end. This is for something different. This was just a trial. Um, I uh, done a trial casting with these particular colours and this particular mix of transparent on the bottom and colour to the top end um, with a really nice bright gold and I really deep dark rich blue um, but it was more to get the separation in there um, at the right spot for me to turn the handle and make it look right so um, I think it's turned out quite nice actually so we're starting to get a look at it now and it'll only get more refined from here Just stop that and give you a look at it now so you can see there's that view and um, you can see on camera too there's that view I still think this shot's probably the best shot it shows you head on there head down So I want these first couple initial grits to really work this down so that they get rid of any, any sanding um, marks. But I was pretty careful with the sanding to make sure that we got the bulk it out anyway. I'm just doing the exact same as what I've done with the sandpaper, just sand in different directions just to make sure that we don't minimise the amount of radial marks that can be left from the turning in the same direction all the time.
this grit and the next one, the brown and the green, are the two that I'm going to really focus focus on, making sure we get it right. And then once we get to the lighter grits, they're just going to refine it down. So. coming up into this section here which gives it an interesting look. Um, there's very little to no blue on the underside, there's just a couple of tiny little specks of blue coming through the bottom of the gold which is what I wanted to try and achieve because I want the gold to be coming down and only seeing the gold from the bottom of the brush or from the side of the brush um, handle. So um, I think we've really achieved what sort of set out to do from the the original casting when it was poured. about an hour and a half now. Um, so I've still got to part it off and then detail the bottom and then give the bottom a sand. But the sanding on the bottom doesn't take um, too long if I can get the tooling right on it. Um, this is the part that takes most of the time. The bulk of the handle. And I think that should just about do me for that grip, I think. So I'll give that a wipe off. Stick that to the other side and I'll grab the next one. So this is the green one. It's um, 1800 grit, this one. And again, I'm going to do a fair bit of work with this one because um, just want there to be no marks in that transparent clear whatsoever. I want it to be like glass. keep these really wet otherwise you um, take the surface off them. I've got the, a couple of them are actually getting really warm so um, I've got a couple of new packs coming but they're still cut lovely I mean um, you can't see it there but I can see it down here um, a lot of white residue on the and that's the um, that's the resin coming off during the wet process. And that was um, water in the pot there was um, was actually fresh water when I started this timing. So um, you can see how marky it is now with the, the amount of sanding that it's had with the dust going in there. Just going to do the same with this one, give it a good rub up by hand in all different directions. If you're still in the chat, Ross, you got any questions, mate, just pop them into the chat. Aye, I keep checking it every uh, few minutes, so um, feel free, mate. 
I don't know what you do for a, for a living. This is a hobby for me, but um, it makes a bit of pocket money for me and keeps me uh, keeps me going with it. Allows me to buy, you know, more products. There's quite a, I've got a fair bit of money tied up in um, pigments and resins and uh, machinery, etc., to do these shaving brush handles and shaving brushes. Um, but it's really a hobby thing, and it doesn't make me a living. Um, but I enjoy doing it, and um, it gives me a little bit of extra pocket money to um, to keep doing what I enjoy. And this is another polyester uh, resin, this one. Um, so it's very toxic um, when it's in its um, liquid state. And, uh, but once, it's, um, once you start working with it, it's, um, it's very toxic. So um, you gotta be careful with the polyester resin. But it gives a beautiful shine at the end. Better than most of the epoxies and the polyurethanes and stuff. So, um, but they are, as I mentioned in the previous video, um, the epoxies and the uh, polyurethanes are getting much better. But still don't compete with the um, polyester. Now I'm just going to uh, move that camera back just very very slightly so excuse the noise and the I just don't want it getting splashed um, with uh, water and stuff off the not that it's spinning really fast but it's still spinning enough to um, throw water off and I don't want it getting up into the camera or the lens of the camera so uh, Nothing special. I run the uh, the stream here with um, um, two GoPros. Um, these are the Hero Threes Blacks, I think they were. Um, so I've got two of them running. Um, one on the tail cam, which is the one you're looking at now, this one. Um, and then I do have um, I do have. That one, which is the uh, which is the other GoPro, and then I have that one, which is a um, nice uh, Sony Handycam, um, which is you know gives a nice overall shot. I have that zoomed in slightly just so that it just gets in what we need to get in the shot. And I've got um, three lots of studio, studio lighting, um, two or three foot in front of me. You know, one, one bang in the centre behind the uh, Sony Handycam. And then I've got another bank off to the right and another bank off to the left. Um, so yeah, just to put light in here because um, just with the normal strip lights, fluoros up in the, uh, the roof, it doesn't give enough light. So these just... Um, Give me that light so that the uh, the cameras can work to the best as well, and obviously we get a reasonably good quality video, um, 1080 HD. So I'm just going to do the same again now. Just give this a good hand rub. Now that we're onto the uh, much finer grits, this one is um, 2,400 grit. So um, I'm just going to give that a good working over as well.
if I go to that um, camera three, you'll see um, you can see on here all the the um, white powdery film that's coming off the sanding pads. I think the next time I might try and see if I can get some of the colour just in little strands coming down into the clear. Um, I think that would give quite a nice effect too, but uh, have the bulk of it transparent like this. But just with maybe a couple of colours and you get a little bit of blue and you'll get, you should get, if I do that, you'll get a little bit of blue and a little bit of gold coming down into the transparency as well, but without it actually mixing in. Um, it would look quite nice, but this is actually shaping up to look exactly how I wanted it to come up, so um, you're going to be pleased with that. And where are we at? We're at nearly an, an hour and 45, so yeah, it's going to probably run a bit over two hours for this one. one now, a little bit of speed, and this one is, um, what have we got, we've got um, three there, so this one's the tan now, um, which is 3200 grit. start to see it shine now and we'll start to see um, the clear really clearing up now um, I'm not sure how the music's going down, but um, hopefully it's um, better than just watching me sanding, sanding shaving brush handles. So at least it gives you something to listen to. I can't hear it, it doesn't play out because I'd get um, too much feedback if I tried to play the music in here that, that's um, going through the video. Um, so I don't have any music, that's why you probably hear me whistle every now and again and mumble a tune or something. But, um,
feel the air starting to cool down again now. I don't know what temperature it's supposed to get down at tonight. But I can feel the air starting to cool in the workshop here. One, which is 3600 grit. I haven't played around with the uh, microphone music settings. There's a whole um, audio mixer in this little switcher that I'm using, and um, it's got so many things in it, but it's um, fairly complex. I've never really played around with that kind of stuff before, so I've just basically got it, got the volume levels to where I think are reasonable, and then um, that's it. I haven't put any filters or um, equalizers or expanders or filters or anything like that on the sound so um, the sound probably could be better um, if I knew how to do it but <coughs> excuse me um, I don't know how to use it but I will study about it and um, eventually work out how to, to get the best out of it okay that's the brown down now we're on to the uh, teal, which is 4,000 4, grit now. So we'll fire up again. And straight away you can see that band of um, greyish water running around the transparent section of the handle there, where I'm sanding. Um, that's it starting to cut straight away.
again, a little bit of a hand rub just to um, change direction of sanding. When I said the new uh, the new hospital in Albany, it's probably a few years old now, um, Ross, because I've been um, retired from work for uh, probably four four plus years now, I think. So um, the hospital would have had to gone up back prior to that because the project went on for a while. I was probably down there about three or four times, and then we done um, then we done a lot of work in the prisons um, refits throughout uh, Perth. I think there was about three or four. We actually done the prison down and up in um, Albany as well. Um, so the hospital and the prison was done down there. Boy, this is looking stunning. Absolutely stunning. If I may say so myself. That's the uh, blue down, or the tail I should say. Now we're on to the purple, which is um, 6,000 grit. Airplane flying overhead, large duck. Too much longer, and then we should be um, got another couple of pads to go through, and then we'll be um, turning it around, parting it off, finish off the bottom, and that'll be this one done. Um, I'll be able to show it with the knot in at the end, um, but I won't be gluing the knot in at this stage. I'll do that off camera, and then I'll take a couple of pictures, and we'll post them on our social media and Instagram and. Facebook and at this stage this one's available if anybody is interested in it um, I don't think it'll last too long though so you need to get in quick if, uh, if anybody's interested in this particular brush so if you've watched the video and you're interested drop me a message and like I said I don't expect this one to last long can be fitted with a um, a nice um, one of our popular um, two band finest badges. Um, lovely, lovely knot. It's a bulb knot, your old style bulb knot. Very dense, fair bit of backbone. Um, loft will be about the I think the depth I drilled it. It'd be around about the 54, 55 mark I think from memory. 
um, so it should be a lovely brush. So it's a 26mm knot <clears throat> and out of the handle it will be 28 um, So we're not choking the knot and restricting a flow through, should be nice. Yeah, I think, um, I'll just see your comment there, Ross. Um, yeah, I think it would just, I mean, this was the look I wanted for this brush. Um, but I think if I um, if I put a little bit of the colour, just push a little bit of the colour with, um, with a fine instrument down inside when it's being cast, I think it would just give the, uh, the bottom section of the handle just another look. Um, but look, you know, this is a thing, you just got to keep doing new things, different things trying things and you know I like all my brushes to be um, fairly different I don't like to be doing the same thing all the time and um, some of the bigger brush makers um, they don't actually hand cast their blanks they're not even hand cast and um, a lot of them extruded out of the machine and then um, put on a CNC turned into a handle and um, <clears throat> that's why you look at some of the knots and you can see they're all exactly the same colour, the same style. Um, they're not custom castings, they're off rod stock. So, like I said, it's just extruded in a machine, current to, current to lengths, thrown into a machine, turned to, turned to shape, and then um, a knot stuck in it and sold. Whereas these are hand pulled from the very beginning with raw ingredients, um, a bit of artistry to to get different effects and different things, a bit of know-how, a bit of experience, and then um, <clears throat> turn it in a nice shape that suits the handle, put a nice knot in it, and you've got one U-Butte handle. And it's one of a kind. Um, you know, you won't see anybody else posting a, a photograph in a, a shave of the day or anything like that um, with another one the same as this. It, it just won't happen. Um, I mean, people can try and replicate it, I suppose, but the replication will never be the same as this. It'll always be different. And that's what I like about the uh, hand pour. Hand pouring my own handles, um, because I can customise them to get them to do what I want to do. And sometimes they'll do what they want to do. But um, at the end of the day, they're always different. So um, that's the, the aspect I like about the custom brushes as opposed to some of the rod stock brushes but it's each to their own and um, some of those manufacturers the well-known manufacturers um, do have some really nice handles and some really nice knots as well and um, it's just what you personally want really that's what it comes down to at the end of the day and um, if you want something really different then go to a custom caster and um, brush maker and not uh, one of the big boys that just um, uses um, rod stock a machine. You can see the amount of love and care that I put into my brushes. Um, just in my, my turnings and my casting. I, I like to do it. I like to do it properly. I think I said in the video um, last night or the night before. I'll never, never make a lot of money at my brushes because um, I put more time into them than what I could ever charge for a brush or a handle, um, but I enjoy it, it keeps me busy, it keeps me out of trouble, keeps me off the streets, and um, and I can do stuff like this, you know, which I, I enjoy, I enjoy sharing and and um, letting other people see crafts being done, and I've been in the trade all my life, I was a shop fit enjoyer to try it, and um, I've been in the building industry pretty much all my life, and I, you know, supervisory, foreman role, then into management, um, field service manager for Australasia for a company for um, seven years, travelling all over the world, and um, I just enjoy this. I mean, I love it. It's you know doing my own thing when I want, how I want. Now the last pad. So we. Um, once we stop this and uh, turn it around, well we should actually see how that clears, 
coming up. I mean, what I can see here now, it looks like glass. So um, I think I've achieved what I wanted to achieve. But once I stop it, I'll give it a quick dry off. It'll still be a little bit dullish. It'll, it'll have a nice shine, but it'll still be a little bit dullish until I get it on the buffer. And then once I get it on the buffer, she's just going to pop, I reckon. And a little bit of polish on it too. Um, but I can't really be any happier with that. That's, um, that's come up really nice. And I'm just going to give this a little freehand rub as well when we're finished. You can actually look into the bottom and see the gold underneath them, um, which is quite nice as well. Um, but yeah, that'll maybe be one that I'll try, Ross. Um, I'll try maybe... Um, I mean, I have done some transparent ones with coloured swirls, like sort of transparent, different coloured swirls. I think I've done one where it had a blue and a red and a green coming down in it, and it was just... Uh, transparent colours that would just sort of spiral down and oh mate, I could have sold that brush ten times over. Um, but like I said, I like to do everything different and come up with different shapes and different uh, designs and different types of castings. So it just makes me different to everybody else and that's another good thing about it. Everybody has their own way of doing things and their own styles. And Hopefully if somebody's looking for a brush to find a style they like and Okay, I think that's going to do that. Okay, that's going to do it. So that's, um, We've got to go through more sanding on the bottom when I do the bottom, but that's uh, we're about to do that now. So um, <clears throat> I'm just going to take a clean paper towel here, or a clean section of paper towel, and just give that a little bit of a, a rub off, just to get it dry. Give it a clean in there. And there you go. I'll just bring that tailstock up so you can get a closer shot on that. It's just like glass. Lovely. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll pull this back now. Um, I might change the camera to a different shot. Uh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, we want to go to camera one. We'll go to that one and um, I'm just going to swap the chucks over now and we'll get this one out of here and then part it off. So just bear with me. And you can see there's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of waste on the bottom of that. So I cast my blanks to a size to minimize waste, which is always a good thing. So I'll set that there for now. off the head stop, give it a little twist, take that chuck off and put the big one on. There we go. Now this one's going to get held Again, I like to explain this. So this blank was held by the chuck there. So that's a, like a clamping method onto the, uh, onto the piece. What we're going to do now is we're going to turn the piece around and we're actually going to sit it onto this, um, these jaws here so that the clamping is actually done inside where the knot's going to be. So um, we'll just put that on there now and I'll just take up the slack. I keep thinking there's dirt and dust on the handle, but it's actually um, from all the shavings and reflection underneath. It sort of magnifies it into the brush. Um, anyway, 
Let's get that up to about there. Make sure I get my tool rest in there. That should be fine there. And then we'll bring up the tailstock. I'll move that there. Drop that right down. Get that as close as I can to the uh, to the brush. And we'll bring the uh, tailstock up now and make sure that we're pretty much on centre there, which we are. And I'll tighten that up and that. And then we're going to part the, um, the bottom of the handle off one side, tighten that chuck up now. So I've got to go the opposite direction to make sure we're clamping and I've got to clamp to a point where I'm not going to expand it too far and cause the brush to explode or, or crack. So um, it's just enough to hold it on there so it doesn't come off when I, when I part it off here. And then so that I can dress up the bottom and give it a sanding to finish the, finish the handle. So I think I'm going to quit there. And I'll go back to... Um, I'll go back to camera three. Um, I'll give you a head down on me parting this off this time so you get a, a nice view in there so there you can see the uh, see the handle with all the dust all over it now I put a polish on at the end and that polish is um, a rejuvenator for uh, polycarbonate headlights on cars and stuff like that um, and it, it puts a nice polish on this um, so it's obviously got a certain amount of abrasive in it as well but it just really gives it that additional shine again um, so yeah we'll, we'll get on with it anyway I'll pat this off so lathe nice and slow take it up to about maybe 15, 1600 no maybe not as far I'm going to take it up to about yeah about there that's about 13, 20 rpm so I'm going to go in I'm going to cut not cut all the way through, then I'm going to relieve the cut so that the tool doesn't bind up in the slot um, and then we'll just keep nipping away at it until I get the until uh, I get that piece to come off ok so I'm going to let that go and I think I need to drop the tool rest down a little bit more so carefully Lower that a little bit. And then I'm going to just take a little relief cut now. And I'm going to go into the bottom of the brush again. A little relief cut. And all the, uh, the live centre is doing is giving me a, um, a bit of security holding the, uh, the blank in against the chuck while I'm putting pressure on it to cut. Um, and then once I part it off, I get down to the last bit, I just take it ever so gently and part it off. And um, I'm going to go in bottom of the handle again, going a bit further this time. And I'm just using the tip of the tool to part its way in. Just relieving the cut again so that we don't get bound up in the uh, and this one should go through this time and you'll see the little bit will come off. There we go, done. So now I will, um, excuse my arm getting in the way there. So I'm going to move that back. I'll move the tail camera back. Just uh, actually, I'll bring it in because I, I, well, let me turn the tool rest around first. So we'll slow that down. We'll come in that way this time with the tool rest. We'll bring the tool rest in. And I'll bring it 
up to where I think it needs to be for the spindle gauge. So the spindle gauge on centre, that should be reasonably good. So I'll bring the tailstock in again now so that you can actually get a better down shot on that and see what I'm doing. We've got a heap of powder on the handle. Yeah, but there I think should be sufficient. I'll just lock that off, wind that back. Spindle gouge. Very gently, I'm going to take very light cuts off the bottom. And it's just a pull cut. And I'm paying particular attention to the very, very centre of the handle so that I don't end up with a little knobble in there. And all I'm doing here is hollowing the bottom of the handle so that it's always going to sit flat. Mainly that used to be done in timber handles because um, timber can change shape as it's turned and after it's turned and it, it can dry out more and it can cause the timber to move. So sometimes you think you might have something that's sitting nice and flat but then after a period of time it might change and it might not sit flat. So um, people tended to do different things to make sure that the uh, whatever it was they were making would always sit flat but with these handles you really don't need to do it it's only if water gets under there that the handle can move or okay so what I'm going to do there is stop the lathe now grab my stainless steel rule and I'm just going to check how much hollow I've got in that and I'm fairly happy with that I don't know if you can see, yeah, you should be able to see that, maybe just in the camera. I'm just going to go a little touch just on the outer edge here. I think we've got that nice and flat. No real bump in the middle. So I'll take the uh, tool rest away now. And a couple of light tool marks, but they'll come out with sanding. So we've just we're two hours fifty minutes into the stream now. So um, yeah, probably about on par where I where I normally am with a fresh handle. I don't, I don't need that spinning, I'll do this freehand on the bottom. So I want that novel to be completely away in the bottom in the centre there. Um, and I want to rub this out to the outer diameter now, so that um, we cover the whole brush, the whole brush is finished and been sanded and polished. And this is the coarser grit, so this is I think uh, 180. Um, so it's fairly coarse, so I don't apply a lot of pressure. Um, just very, very lightly. I apply a bit of pressure initially, but then I, I lighten up on the pressure so that I'm not instigating deep scratches into the uh, into the handle or deeper than than it needs to be. Um, I just want to try and make sure we've got no knob model in the bottom there. Sometimes it's really hard to get them out. You always end up with a, a little ring or a, a pinpoint or... I'm 
That'll do that with that grip. Next grip. So hard or there I'm pressing just to make sure we get scratches out from the previous grip. And in a sort of circular motion there is just a very very slight ring in the bottom there but I'm sanding it to get it out but it doesn't seem to want to come out. So uh, do a little bit of work on that. Still there. Still very, very slight, faint, but almost gone. Still there, but I think I'm going to have to leave it at that. I don't want to keep going. So that's the second grip. There's only four of these ones and then we're back onto the water ones and uh, it goes normally fairly quickly on the bottom. It's just a case of repeating the process. Very, very tiny little circle there, um, but the more I sand it, the more it seems to want to come out. So, um, well, when I say out, it, it seems to go more of a ring the more I sand it. So, um, I'm not going to go too much further with it. It may come out once we hit it with the, um, the water pads, the micro mesh pads. is almost done. So um, bring the other ones over again. And I'll try and bring that camera around a little bit more so you can see the bottom of the brush. Um, probably not a hundred percent but And then we just go through this process again now. And you'll see now I'm blending the bottom into that curve there as well now, the bottom curve, so that we don't have any sharp edge when, when it's held in the hand. Yeah, the tiny, tiny little circular mark in the bottom, but it doesn't want to come out, regardless of how much it rubs. So, um, and it wasn't a tool mark that was in there because there was no tool mark in the beginning. Just keep rubbing it. Hopefully, it'll come out <coughs> or reduce. It's not very big anyway, but I just. I'd rather have it not have it there. It's still there. It 
doesn't want to go. Ah, we're getting there now, she's nearly there. That's still there. <laughs> so it's very, very faint, um, but it's not going to come out. I don't know why. Well, we'll see. It might um, might be out by the time we go through the pads. It's, it's Just give it a little bit of extra work on the uh, center there. Everywhere else, it's good. going to do it. So that's one down. So we're up to 2 hours 25, I don't think I'll be doing another brush tonight, um, it does normally take me about 2, two and, 2 and a half, I think the stream the other night was about 3 hours, or just over 3 hours, um, but I don't, I'll do this one and I think I'll call it a night and I might do another one tomorrow night, we'll see how we go, um, that'll give me a little bit of time to clean up the mess from this brush around the lathe, um, give the tools a little bit of a sharpen again, and then we'll be ready to go again tomorrow night. We might do another one tomorrow. Um, I do have a few things on tomorrow through the day, but um, I might be able to squeeze one in tomorrow night as well. I've got another blank sitting here to be done. Um, so all going well. And once I get that one turned, um, I've got. Well, I might do. I might do another casting stream, casting another couple of handles, um, experimental type ones. Um, I've got a couple to do for Surjan from Rhodium Knots, which I need to get onto um, soon. And then I've got a group by of um, about fourteen of yeah fourteen, I think it is. Um, in Malachite Green um, for the PNC forum. Um, this will be the second limited edition brush I've done for, for them and their group. And they're all being fitted out with rhodium knocks as well, so they're going to be um, a very nice, very nice brush actually for the money that people are paying for them. OK. 
Okay. I think this one's only going to need a light buff tonight because um, very light buff because it's um, it's finished up very nice actually, nice and smooth and clear. I don't think it's going to take much in the way of buffing to bring this one to life. How's that um, music fitting in with the video, Ross? It's just um, uncopyrighted music that I can get off of YouTube to put in the background in my, vid in my videos just so that it's not just me talking and the noise of what's going on around about me. At least it gives a little bit of music which I thought might be a, li a little bit more pleasurable for people viewing. So um, let me know your thoughts on the music and the level of the music throughout the video. Um, the, the, the music is a, it's a bit of a mixed bag but it's all just um, instrumentally type stuff. But let me know what you think of it mate and if the volume's okay or if you would recommend higher or lower through the video. What have you ordered Ross? Oh you ordered one of the, um, the PNC brushes. Oh, good on you. Should be a lovely brush, mate. So I'm trying to work out who you are on the uh, forum now. In WA. I'm going to be looking to do a couple of uh, giveaway brushes in the uh, in the YouTube channel at some stage as well. Probably not just quite, you know, now, but um, a little bit down the track. I'll be, um, I might um, do a casting and, and turn a brush, and it will go to uh, go to somebody that's um, viewing the uh, viewing the video at the time. So, um, but I'll need to wait until I get a few numbers up first get some more people subscribed to the channel um, do you think the music should be a little bit louder um, Ross Just increased it a little bit. Tell me what you think of that now. <laughs> yeah, mate, how do you think I feel? Every time I make another brush. Um, let me just change screens here. Yeah, every time, every time I make another brush, I think, oh Jesus, this is a nice brush. Oh, I should have put it in my den, or shouldn't I? Or what, what should I do? And I, sometimes I find it really hard to part with them. So um, they go in my cabinet inside the house, and um, you know, depending on what happens from there, it'll go on the website and be sold. I'm, I'm doing away with the website now because I've basically shut my pen business down, and I'm just concentrating on shaving brushes now and, and doing a bit of live streaming and stuff because I, I quite enjoy it. And um, but yeah, I, I have some in there from some of the first ones that I've done, a few timber ones and stuff, and I look back on them now and I think, oh Jesus, they don't look right. So I leave them in the cabinet and they never go anywhere, I never advertise them or, or do anything with them. But every now and again I put a really couple of really nice ones in there. I've got a few in there at the moment actually I should put up for sale, but um, oh, one day, one day. I might even use them as the giveaways or I might turn the brush in the stream and, and give that away. Um, to whoever's in the stream, but uh, like I said, I need to get 
a bit more of a follow-on first um, to make it worthwhile to give the handles a lie in that case. Um, but we'll see how we go anyway. It's all um, it's all good fun, all trial and error, seeing what works, what doesn't work, what people like, what they don't like. <coughs> So you think that um, that volume for the music there now is, um, and I mean, it's like I said, it's mixed music, um, but you think that that level's um, a nice, comfortable level, or should it be slightly higher or slightly lower? It's just getting the right mix between the uh, the mic from the Sony Handycam, which is you know taking my sound. <coughs> um, just getting the mix right with that and the uh, and the music because I can't hear it. I can't have anything on here because it um, it'll feed back terribly through the, the whole system. So I'm reliant on other people telling me um, how it sounds. But once I get the settings, then I can lock those settings into the mixer and it will be the same every time I come on, so um, yeah. So that's that brush done now, that's just gone through all the grits now on the bottom, and the bottom looks nice and clear. Um, so I'm just going to spin that up, give it a little bit of a dry, slow it down. Okay, that's had a bit of a dry, so we'll turn her off. Still got that very, very little faint, little small ring in the in the middle there, but um, it's not going to detract from the handle in any way. So um, I'm going to leave that. I don't think there's any other scratches there. That's looking pretty good. So now I can release that from the chuck it's all done and I've got to go in the opposite direction to release because it's in clamp mode from inside. So there's the handle. You can see the gold in the bottom. Oh hang on, just let me go to the other shot. <coughs> so there's the handle. Up close. We'll polish up nice and clear be like the last that bottom section when it's finished. It is now but there's a bit of dust on it already but once I get that other stuff on it it's uh, kind of like an anti-static so it should stop it attracting the dust. I hate it when I take photographs and there's little specks of dust on it, it just spoils the look of the brush. Um, and then if we look in through the bottom there's that little circular ring that I was talking about that I can't seem to get out it just keeps wanting to get bigger if I keep going with it and there's looking into the bottom of the brush. Um, pretty spectacular. Nice and then we've got a little bit of clear blending up into the into the top section there. I don't know if you can see that. You'll probably see it there. A bit of clear and a little bit of blue popping through here and there and darkness of the blue mixing into the gold through there. Bright gold through here with a nice blue coming down. It's blue all around, on, around the top so um, another nice little feature in that with the mix that, that's been done. Would have been nice if there's another little bit of blue around through here, but the beggars can't be choosers, as eh? That's it. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just um, go back to that shot there. We'll put this handle aside for now. Um, I'm just going to take that big chuck off now. And I'll put the buffing mops in here. We'll give it a bit of a buff, then I'll sit the knot in it. You get to see what it looks like as a finished brush. And then, um, then we'll call it a night, I think. Yes, yeah, good, okay. So the sound's good. Thanks, mate. <coughs> I appreciate that. Oh, what am I putting the other chuck on for? Um, it's the buffing mop I need in there now. Um, get rid of some of this here. 
my compound, my buffer. I'll take the headstock back for a tick to get this in. Then I'll bring it back up. And take it back a tiny tad. Wind the tail stock in. Tighten it up, sorry about my arm there. And we'll come that way for the buffer. Make sure I haven't pulled any wires out. So a little bit of buffing compound here. Start the lathe slowly, bring it up to speed. That's all it takes for the handle. Move that out of the way. So get my hand in there and I'll move to that other shot again now and we can see I don't think camera two no it's camera two is not going to show nothing there so um, we'll go back to that shot there I think And you can see the compound going onto the bottom of the brush, so that's um, cutting, cutting and polishing. I'm going to keep a tight grip on the handle so it doesn't get flicked out my hand. Keep it moving, keep it turning. Get a nice even coverage off the buffer. Plus, if you're in any other um, shaving groups or uh, Facebook pages or other forums, um, either here in Australia or over in America, um, if you if you are and you want to share some of my live stream links to some of those sites, I'd much appreciate that um, because the more I can get in here, the better. It makes it really worth my while to do it, um, rather than me standing here talking to myself all night long every night. Um, so like I said, it all helps to get the channel going, and so feel free to share any of the uh, any of the links to any of the live streams on any other groups that you're in. If you're not that kind of person that gets involved in all those things, then that's fine. I've got no problems with that. What I'm doing here is I'm using the side of the mop and I'm just getting into that little rim um, where that wider band is it separates the top section to the bottom section of the handle just to make sure that we've got no scratches or anything in there. Um, it's very hard to get into those very small areas with sandpaper so um, I do my best to get in there and then I use the, uh, the micro mesh pads to get in and do the bulk of it um, but it's quite hard, so you, you do need to rely on the buffer to get into some of those tight sections as well to um, work its way right in there to make sure you're getting everything done on the handle. And I'm fairly happy with that now. I'm, I'm actually getting in there. You can see the mop's changing shape. 
um, in the um, in that shop. You can see there's a line forming there. That's where I'm actually getting in with that little um, ledge of the top section of the handle. Uh, we'll go back there for now. Now I'm going to start on the, the very top section of the handle now. The gold in that is absolutely striking. The blue is probably a little bit over the top, um, but it, I mean it does look nice. Um, But it's amazing what different colours you think, oh no, that's going to look absolutely disgusting and you mix them and when you see them turn, they just oh, they look incredible sometimes, even though you think, not nah, poor colour choice. Just working my way up to the top of the handle now. We're nearly finished. Yeah, well, I put a link up on there. You've probably seen it, Ross. That's probably how you found the ch found the channel. Um, it's just getting them over to come and come and view the videos. Um, the good thing about the live streams is that you can have this kind of chat as well, um, especially if you've got a lot of people in there. And I mean, they're all in for the same reasons, so they've all got the same interests. Um, but it's good if we can get more people in. So yeah, try and drag a few over, mate. But um, there is a link being put up in there, so um, everybody should be aware of it now. I posted in there, um, I think it was earlier today actually, I posted in there, just giving an update on the um, the PNC limited edition brush that will be getting done shortly. Um, the last of the blanks should be done in the next week or so. And then from there I'll be starting them. And once I start I'll just continue on and make them all. So I will be doing a couple of live streams of those getting made as well. Which, you know, I would like to think would generate a little bit of interest with PNC as well. So um, yeah, it'd be great. It's good to get other people in the chat because it, you know, people chatting sometimes they can come up with ideas and, and uh, solutions to things. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm open to, to listening to ideas and you know what people want and how they want it and new ideas to try different things. So there we go. There's the uh, there's the handle all buffed. Still got a lot of compound on it. Um, but I'm now going to take it onto the soft cotton wheel or flannelette wheel or whatever it is now and um, just go through the same process with that now. And buffing, polishing it up now. And then we've got one final stage where I put, um, put the handle back on the chuck, the big chuck. And then I uh, apply some of that um, Plastix polish and rejuvenator polish for um, plastics and polycarbonates and stuff like that. And that's when you see it come to life really. It just puts a fantastic finish on it. And it doesn't, it's not, I um, mean it's obviously got an abrasive in it but it must be very very fine to work on clear polycarbonate headlights and stuff to rejuvenate them so um, it must be so fine. Is that Serge eh? from uh, Rhodium Knots? Is it? I'll take it that's the initials there. Is it you, my friend?
good stuff. Good to have you here. I was just sprouting off, sprouting off about your um, beautiful uh, hand-tied rhodium knots earlier in the in the stream, Mike. Uh, well, we've had a lot of people in. There's only been a couple of guys in. Ross is hanging there from pretty much the start. Um, Tim Miles was in earlier. He said he might drop in back later. I'm almost close to being finished. I was going to do another brush, but um, I think I'll, I'll call it quits after this one. Um, so you've come in right at the end, mate, but um, once the uh, once the live stream goes up on my channel, you'll be able to view it back if you wanted to anyway. But good to have you here, mate. So I was just talking to Ross about um, the PNC handle getting started very, very shortly and um, tell him that uh, he is going to be superly impressed with your um, hand-tied knots in these PNC limited edition brushes. So Ross is in the uh, Ross is from WA. He's in the stream as well. As you can probably see in the chat there. So feel free to chat to each other if you want while I continue on with this. I've just got a little bit more buffing to do. I only give credit where credit is due, mate. Yeah, like I said, I only give credit where credit is due, um, and your mocks are deserving of that. And um, there's a lot of people out there that I know um, that I've spoken to fairly recently that um, that have tried all these other knots, Paladins and Declaration, and you know a few others, um, Shave Mac and all these. And um, the feedback is is that yours is up there, and. Uh, the general consensus is that yours are up there and over and above better than some of those. Again, it's everybody's interpretation though. Um, what some people like, others don't. Um, but it's good to get uh, good positive feedback like that on a, on a hand-tied knot um, because there's not too many really good ones out there. So it's uh, good to have an Aussie one here, uh, Sergeant. Am I saying your name right? Um, I, I still don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I've never met you to know. Um, how to say it? But um, I'm presuming it's Sirjan. Sirjan, or you'll need to um, you'll need to tell me that at some stage, mate. I'd hate to be pronouncing your name wrong all the time. I'll bring that other camera shot back. Uh, we'll try two. Um, yeah, you don't really see nothing from two, so we'll go back to three. We'll go to there. This handle would have been deserving of one of your knots too, mate. But I've done this with one of my. Um, I've done this with one of my better um, two-band finest. Not hand-tied though, but um, it's knots I've been using for a long time and. Uh, I've had a lot of good positive feedback about them, but uh, they're not in the same category as your hand tied knots, that's for uh, sure. Mate, you need to get into more of these streams, uh, once, especially once I start building the channel up and uh, getting a few subscribers and people coming into the chat. Um, I was just saying to Ross, I'd appreciate if he can share it around any groups or forums or anything that he's a part of either in Australia or America or wherever. So same applies to you, Sarjan, if you're listening. Um, if you want to share a few links around, because um, it'd be good actually to get you on here too, um, in one or two live streams where we can maybe turn the handle and um, show, your, show your lovely knots. And, um, wouldn't it be nice if we could get you in the live stream live? But anyway, we'll see what see what happens, eh? So it's Sarjan, yeah? If it is, top stuff. I've been getting it pretty close then. Almost right. <laughs>
so I still haven't made it over to the new buffing system yet. Um, I really need to find an area where I can set it up and maybe clamp it temporarily um, so that I can start using it. Um, because I, I haven't got a space, a free bench space to put it on. I've got that much equipment in here in the workshop. So I really need to make more bench space and get a lot of other stuff in cupboards and on shelves. Um, so once I get that done, I'll have a permanent spot set up for that. And hopefully I can um, maybe reposition the lathes as well so that we can get some better um, closer to the grinders, the buffers and the grinders for sharpening tools and stuff like that. That's what my plans are anyway. So I'm nearly done with this guys. Um, I'll show you this very closely in the camera so you can see the finish that's on this. It's just absolutely unbelievable. I'm very happy with it and I'm still going to plan and try and do a few other experimental castings. I don't like doing lots and lots of castings that are the same. I like doing one-offs. Um, A little bit of buffing compound in there. It's actually doing as I thought. I, I mentioned in the um, the other live stream the other night, I think it was, uh, not last night, the night before, it might be Thursday night, I mentioned in there about this blank and, and how I thought it was going to turn out, and it's it's really come out probably better than I thought it was going to actually. Um, I'm pretty impressed with the way it's turned out. But I'm going to play around and do a few other ones and try and get more colour coming down into the transparent part as well. I do like the idea of the clear transparency, but it would be nice just to get a little splash of colour in there, I think. Um, but this is the effect I wanted to get on this this um, this handle, so um, like I said, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. Just make sure I'm getting all the buffing compound out. And then I'll give you a close screenshot. What do you think of the music in the background, uh, Sir John? Do you think that the, uh, the volume level is okay? Or should I lower it a bit? Or is the music okay? It's not too... Um, I tried to get a nice mix of music, different types of music. It's just all the copyright free stuff from uh, YouTube so that uh, my videos don't get pulled down. I was saying to Ross before, I can't hear the, the audio output or the music. Um, the video output, anything. So I'm relying on people in the group to in, in the live stream to actually tell me if things are sounding okay and or if it's too loud or too low. Or... I done a stream the other night and I, I went about 44. Um, I went about 44 minutes into the stream and before somebody says. Oh, there's no volume in here and of course I uh, I moved the cameras around just prior to the stream starting and the uh, when I activated the uh, the sound on the camera I'd activated the wrong camera because I'd moved them around so um, 44 minutes of stream with no sound <laughs> but um, we got there in the end but uh, a real rookie mistake um, but um, yeah we got there in the end. Well, the lathe's on constantly. The lathe's, well, pretty much constantly. I mean, I do turn it off in between different things that I'm doing. Um, the lathe is fairly quiet for a lathe, as far as that goes. Cool. Okay. Like I said, I just felt that it had to have something in the stream because um, I just felt that um, 
it was just me talking and the noise of the machines, it was just a little bit um, too much. So I think the video just helps, the music just helps to break it up a bit and make it a bit more enjoyable, less boring. Especially when I'm in the sanding parts. <laughs> the sanding parts are um, take the longest. I turn the brush in about, I turn the handle to shape in probably an hour, a bit less than an hour normally. Um, I can do them quicker, but I'll take my time with them. I'm, I'm in more rush. Um, but then I spend about another hour and a half, two hours bloody polish, sanding and polishing. So, uh, but I really can't wait to get on those bigger buffing, buffing mops, the inch ones. About two inches wide as well, rather than, than these little little mops. I mean, they've done the job over the years. They've served me well, and I just like the idea of being able to do it on the lathe, so that um, you know you don't have to move cameras around to go and do other things. You can um, do it all from here, and the lathe is used for the drilling. It's used for the shaping, the tarring, um, the sanding, and then it's used for the buffing as well. But um, maybe I can put bigger wheels on this mandrel or something might do the job as well, that might be another option. Yeah, it might be in the middle of a track break actually, um, then it's coming back in and out, I can see it. Some of the music, um, it might just have different sound levels in the music that I've got in there as well, which I'm, I don't think I can control that. It's just a whole heap of different tracks, um, folk, classical, um, a little bit of pop, a little bit of cinematic um, stuff, and just, just different stuff, just to mix it up a bit. I really, like I said, I don't hear it playing, so I've got no idea. Um, but you're limited for choice and what you can get from YouTube's um, free copyright stuff as well, so uh, it is what it is. Well, I think that's the buffing almost done, so I'm going to take that mop off now. Um, let's give this another little quick touch. That'll do it. Yeah, so I'm going to take that um, take that buffing system off there now. Um, I'll put the big chuck in, and then I'll put the handle back onto the big chuck. And then um, I'll put some of my plastics um, polish on there, which is a, a polish rejuvenator, um, plastic rejuvenator. So we'll get rid of that into there. Done. Um, big chuck. Um, handle, slow the lathe down. It's been fairly true there. So we'll just put a little bit more tension on that, not too much. Just enough to put a very light polish on it. That's it, that's all we need. Let's spin it fairly true. Okay, stop the lathe, get the plastics. And this is the stuff I use, um, so Jan. Maguire's Plastics. Um, it's used on clear plastics. Um, what does it say? 
clear plastic cleaner and polish, removes cloudiness, yellow, yellowing, oxidation and fine scratches, great for head, car headlights. Um, I've had this for a number of years and that's what I've used. I used to use that, a lot of that on my pens as well, my plastic pens, cast pens. Um, but I find it just puts a really nice polish on, on the handles as well as a final polish. Um, some of the um, some of the blanks that I've been sending to you are cast in um, polyurethane as well. Um, I do have some epoxy resins that I'm, I'm going to be using soon as well. Um, but I find this one was cast in polyester, which is what I've mainly used up until now. Um, and I do like the polyester. I mean, it's highly toxic, but um, when when it's in liquid form. Um, but I do like using the polyester because you do get such a nice shine on it. Um, but the polyurethanes and other um, epoxies don't quite get that same shine, but um, they are getting better. They're getting closer to the same um, quality finish that you can get on the polyester from what I've seen years ago. Um, they were, they were nowhere near polyester as far as shine, but they are getting closer. So, um, actually I might, I'll bring it in just a little bit this camera, but um, I won't, well actually I will, I'll bring it right into about there, and then I'll tilt the camera head down a bit so you can actually see that um, come to shine. And I'm just going to work that very lightly in with my finger around the, the brush. lightly and then we're going to walk this around the top section of the brush handle and get some of the groove there so if we go to camera two you will cut there really see too much in that one. So we'll come back to that one, which you can see. And um, I'll just grab a clean piece of paper towel. Fold the paper towel, wipe the excess polish on there, lay it down low, spin it up a little bit, not too fast. I want to just give the the um, the, the um, polish a, a chance to work on the blank. And then I'm going to go in and get that edge polished up there and on the edge itself. And I'm going to come the other way without trying to hit the chuck with my fingers and just do the top. And I'm only touching that very, very lightly, just so letting the uh, letting the polish do its work. Now I'm going to just turn the cloth around, go to a, a dry, clean piece. And then do the same, get into that little, sorry I'm blocking the camera view there. Get into that little section there, into the top section there.
Yeah, I mean, um, look, you, I mean, it's what you get used to and what you find works for you. Um, this is a good, um, this is a good polish, as you'll see um, shortly when I bring it closer to the camera. You'll see it's it really enhances the shine um, and just pops it out. Um, and like I said, it's a a, a plastic. Um, it is a plastic cleaner rejuvenator polish. Um, it's you know formulated for polycarbonate headlights and stuff like that to rejuvenate them once they start to go yellow and start oxidizing. Um, but I find that uh, when I put it on my handles, it really just takes the shine to a, a whole other level. Um, I mean, even on the um, handles where they're epoxies or polyurethanes, um, when they come off the buffing stage, uh, they're typically still a little bit dull. And if you've watched a couple of the other earlier videos that I've done, they, um, one or two of them were actually um, um, polyurethane handles. And um, they, I mean, although they shined up more after the polish was applied, that is, they come off the uh, off the lathe after sanding and micro meshing, um, they're still a little bit flat, a little bit dull. But when you put that polish on them, um, they just pop. Um, I guess over a period of time, it would probably still dull down because that's the nature of the um, polyurethane and, and some of the epoxies. Um, but again, it's, you can you can apply the stuff by hand too, and it just restores it straight back to nice shine. So um, now I'm just going to turn the lathe up a little bit, and I'm just going to give it a final light rub, more pressure. And I'll turn the lathe off. And there we have it. So I'm just going to pull that back a little bit. I'll try and keep it in shot. I'll release the handle. Opposite direction. And um, still got dust sticking to it but it, it takes the um, the static out too and um, that polish when you put that polish on it um, it takes the static so the dust and the shavings don't stick to it as much as what they would normally do um, but you can see the clarity in that and I'm just trying to move it around so we can have a good look at it um, I don't know if the camera is focusing in properly uh, we're getting it there I'm hoping And the gold, and um, we've got some transparent creeping up here into the top section through this through this room here. Um, there's very little to no blue actually came down through the bottom of the handle. You can see a couple of little just little spots where it started to bleed through the gold. Um, and although the handle's transparent clear on the bottom, when you look at it that view, but when you look at it like that, you actually get the gold reflecting through the handle. Um, so it's a bit of a different effect um, just you get the color reflecting through it um, and obviously up the top here is all blue all the way around um, you can see there blue all the way a little bit of buffing compound on the inside there and then when I sit one of my uh, one of my knots in there and um, there's the finished handle I'm quite happy with that so I've got another couple of experimental ones and I, and I actually mentioned in the um, in the video early earlier sir John that I've got a couple of years that I've got to try and at some stage get a start on as well um, because I'm going to have those um, group buy ones coming up shortly and um, I really do need to get on your ones as well so yeah, for something different, um, I'll just go to uh, camera one now, and I'll hold it up closer to the um, to the Sony Handycam so we can get a, another look at it from side on, and I'll just lean over the lathe, and I like to 
get one side or the other. And there's the handle, the brush. In all its glory. Anyway, that's me. Uh, that's me done, mate. Um, stream's been going for three hours and thirty minutes or so now, according to the uh, monitor in front of me. <coughs> so I'm going to call it quits at that. Um, this knot will get glued in later. I'll take a couple of still photographs of this knot, this brush uh, later, and uh, that'll get put up on um, Instagram and Facebook. And um, yeah, see how we go. But yeah, it would be good to get you in a stream at some stage, Sergeant. If we could organise that, it would be absolutely fantastic. I don't know how to do that, um, so we need to research it. Or um, if we're ever you know, lucky that you can get up to Brizzy some, some time, um, get you to come over and have a, look at the, uh, have a look at the workshop and we can maybe do a live stream together or something. But anyway, down the track, mate, I don't have enough viewers or subscribers yet. So like I said, feel free to share around if you want to you know, share... share um, Share the links around, feel free to, um, it, I would really appreciate that, as I say to anybody that comes in the stream. Um, but that's me for now mate, um, I'll maybe catch you later on, um, so cheers for now, thanks for dropping in too mate, and um, we'll chat with you soon. Thanks guys, I'm going to close, uh, close the stream now, thanks for coming in, thanks for uh, participating, thanks for dropping in Sir John, uh, Ross and uh, Tim that was in there earlier. Um, I'm going to pull the, the garage door down as, as they say and uh, end the stream.